chewing gum. It's that small, stretchy, sometimes bubble-blowing treat that people have enjoyed for centuries. Whether you're popping a minty fresh stick after a meal or blowing the biggest bubble just for fun, gum has a unique place in our lives. But have you ever stopped to wonder, how is chewing gum actually made? What kind of process takes it from a sticky mess to that smooth, chewy stuff wrapped in foil? Well, grab a stick, sit back, and let's take a journey inside the surprisingly fascinating world of gum making, right here on History of Simple Things. The idea of chewing on something for pleasure or refreshment isn't new. Ancient civilizations were doing it long before orbit and juicy fruit hit the shelves. The ancient Greeks chewed mastic, a resin from the mastic tree. Native Americans chewed sap from spruce trees. And the Mayans? They had a version of gum made from the sap of the sapodilla tree, something called chiclo. Chicle actually became the base for the first modern gums. But today, most of what we chew is synthetic. That's right, modern gum is more science than sap. So let's break down how chewing gum is made today. From the gum base to the glossy coating, it's a lot more complex than just mixing sugar and flavors. We can split the gum making process into five major steps making the gum base, adding ingredients, mixing and refining, shaping the gum, and finally packaging. Each of these stages plays a crucial role in turning a weird blob of ingredients into something smooth, sweet, and satisfying. Step 1. Making the gum base. The gum base is like the skeleton of chewing gum. It's what gives gum its chewiness. In the early days, this came from natural rubber or tree sap like chicle. But now, most manufacturers use synthetic rubber. That might sound weird, but it's totally safe and specifically designed for food. Synthetic gum bases are usually made from ingredients like polyethylene, polyvinyl acetate, that one helps it be stretchy, and sometimes natural waxes. These materials are melted together in big mixers creating a thick, gooey substance. The gum base is heated to around 120 to 150 degrees Celsius. That's about 250 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, turning it into a sticky molten mass. It's then filtered to remove any impurities. The result? A purified, sticky blob that's ready for the fun stuff. Step 2 adding ingredients. Now comes the flavor and sweetness, the part that actually makes gum taste good. To the gum base, manufacturers add softeners like glycerin or vegetable oil to keep it from drying out. Then comes the sweeteners, which could be natural like sugar or corn syrup, or artificial like aspartame or xylitol, especially for sugar-free gums. Then, of course, there's the flavoring. Mint is the most popular, spearmint, peppermint, wintergreen. But you've also got fruity cinnamon and some wild combos like watermelon lime or cotton candy. These flavor oils are added carefully because too much can overpower the gum. Mixing all this together evenly is key. So everything is blended in large mixers until the gum becomes one consistent thick paste. Step three, refining and rolling. Once the mixture is just right, it's time to cool it down. The hot gum is flattened and rolled into thick sheets, then left to cool for a bit to make it easier to handle. After cooling, the gum is rolled again, this time into thinner sheets or long ropes, depending on the shape of the final product. It's then cut into smaller pieces, sticks, chunks, or pellets. This might sound simple, but the rolling process is super important. If it's too thick or too thin, it can affect the texture and how long the gum lasts in your mouth. Step 4. Shaping and Coating Now, depending on the type of gum, it might get a coating. 
You know those small gum pellets that are shiny and crunchy on the outside? That coating comes from a process called dragging. The gum pellets are tossed around in large rotating pans while liquid sugar or syrup is sprayed on. As the coating builds up layer by layer, the gum gets its final size and glossy finish. Then it's dried and polished with wax to give it that perfect candy-like look. For stick or tab gum, this step is skipped. Instead, they get wrapped and packed directly. Step 5. Packaging. This part is all about speed and precision. Machines wrap each piece of gum individually, then group them into packs or blister cards. Some gums are sealed with foil to keep them fresh and prevent sticking. Before the packs hit store shelves, they go through quality control to make sure every piece looks, smells, and tastes just right. And voila, from sticky base to minty chew, that's how gum is born. Okay, so now you know how gum is made. But here are a few fun facts you might not know. The average person chews about 300 sticks of gum per year. The longest gum chain ever made was over 19,000 feet long. In some places like Singapore, gum is heavily restricted or even banned to keep public spaces clean. And yes, swallowing gum won't stay in your stomach for seven years. It'll pass through like everything else. But maybe just don't make a habit of it. Here's something else to chew on, literally. Most chewing gums today are made with synthetic rubber, which means they don't biodegrade. That's why gum litter is such a problem in cities. Some companies and researchers are working on creating more eco-friendly gum bases, even bringing natural chicle back into the mix. So the next time you unwrap a piece of gum, maybe take a second to think about how much goes into that tiny treat from food science to factory tech, and even environmental design. Gum has come a long way, from tree sap chewed in ancient forests to high-tech factories cranking out millions of pieces a day. It's a simple pleasure, but behind the scenes, it's kind of a scientific marvel. So next time you're blowing bubbles or freshening your breath, remember? You're enjoying the result of hundreds of years of evolution, chemistry, and a bit of magic. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.